such a great big... Uh, 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 cake. Are you all right, Lucy? Yes, thanks, Boris. I'm okay. But I don't think my cake is. I thought so. It's all broken. There, there. Never mind, Lucy. It was the best cake I'd ever made. Mm. It still tastes yummy. Mm. You're eating my cake? It still tastes good. Try some. Mm. Oh, delicious. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what's inside that counts. That reminds me of the story of Isabel the Flamingo. Please tell us, Georgina. Isabel the Flamingo was the most stylish creature in the whole of Africa. That's right, girls. Put your beaks up, push your feathers out, and smile. Excellente! Now, standing on one leg, thank you, no, left leg, Mirabel, and hold. Perfecto! If Isabel used a new word, all the animals in Africa would start to use it too. Perfecto. That's a funny word. What does it mean? It means perfect. The best. Tops. You know, like a muddy watermelon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Paulina, would you be a dear and go and fish over at the other side of the lake? Okay. Isabel was so cool that everyone copied everything she did. <laughs> Look out! Here comes Isabel. You ask her, Zed. Oh, that whole thing that held in here. I'm so sorry, Zed, but I can't understand a thing you are saying. Sorry. I said it's a lovely day. Perfecto. <sighs> yes, Zed, it is. Well, do you want to ask me something? We're having a party tonight. Watermelon, mogo chips. And, well, we were wondering if you'd like to come. Well... I'm really busy, but, um, oh, yes, I'll come. Yes! yes! She said, said yes! Hi, Pauline. Uh, coming to the party tonight? Well, I, um, uh, well, I've got nothing to wear. Oh, come on, Pauline, we can have a laugh. Oh, all right, then I'll see you later. Pauline the Pelican wanted to make herself pretty for the party at Water Lily Lake. Hello, Pauline. Annabelle. Mirabelle. I was just getting ready for the party. You are going to the party? With that baggy beak and those dirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel, I was wondering if you could give me uh, a makeover like. Oh. You've got style, you've got grace, not a feather out of place. I could learn a lot from you. You've got style, you're so chic, from your feet up to your beak. I could learn a lot from you. What I can do. Okay, Pauline, I give you a flamingo makeover. First, we get rid of all the horrible dust and make you nice and pink. Isabel gave Pauline a luxurious pink mud bath. She taught Pauline how to walk elegantly. <laughs> oh, hello, Pauline. You look nice. It is wonderful to be here. 
Although, between you and me, all this stunting on one leg's really very boring. What are you a doing? I'm taking these watermelons to the party. Perfecto! They're a bit heavy. I don't suppose any of you girls could give me a hand. No, no it does. does! I'll give you a hand. Thanks, Pauline. No problem. Are those flowers for the party, Nelson? Yes, Pauline. They'll look lovely if I can keep them all fresh. I'll get you some more water. There you go, Nelson. Now your flowers will look nice and fresh for the party. Thanks, Pauline. That's a real help. Um, I think you've got a little bit of mud on your beak. Oh, never mind. It'll soon wash off. Where do you want it? Over there. Thanks so much for helping me, Pauline. Oh, no trouble at all. We'll soon have this lot moved. What a mess. You can't go to a party looking like that. We help you to look pretty, and this is what you do. Oh, it's so annoying. Party time. Ready, girls? Feathers fluffy, big, high. You're here. Great to see you. Come and sit down next to us. <laughs> Why are they all talking into a Pauline? She's clumsy and dirty. She has no manners whatsoever. And we flamingos have such a style. But Pauline is kind and helpful and honest. That's why everyone loves her. Everyone wants to talk to Pauline because she has helped to make the party a success. When the flamingos understood that true beauty comes from within, they realized that they could learn a lot from Pauline. You're so kind and so sweet. You've got such a useful beak. We could learn a lot from you. We understand you're so grand, cause you lend a helping hand. got so many friends that I can learn a lot from too. We could learn a lot from you. We could learn a lot from you. Like the nose? <laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> what about my nose? Are you cold, dear? No. Only that's the reason people usually have blue noses. Blue? Oh. Oh, we were painting in school today and I must have got some paint on my, on my nose. There. Is it gone now? All gone. Pity. I preferred it blue, I think. Yes. Would have looked nice with some yellow ears. <laughs> <laughs> now, quiet, you two. I think it's time we had a story. All that talk about paint reminds me of Phoebe the koala. Oh, yes. She was the little bear who lived in Australia. Oh, great. It's ages since we had an Australian story. Yes, do tell, Molly. Your Australian accent is much better than mine. Don't tease me, Nelson. Very well. <coughs> this is the story of Phoebe the Koala. 
Phoebe the koala wasn't in a good mood. All summer long, she and her friends, Joey and Jimmy, had been playing games and competitions. The only trouble was, Phoebe hadn't won any of them. Not one. Oh! She didn't seem to be the best at anything. Come on, Phoebe, we're ready! It's exciting! Wait till you see! Watch this, Phoebe! We're having a diving contest! It's my go first! Oh. Go, Jimmy! Oh. What a lovely dive! Yes, perfect, I'd say. Three rotations. I've never seen a kangaroo do that before. Poor Phoebe already had butterflies in her tummy, but next to go was Joey. Oh. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sorry, I blinked. Was it good? Mmm, good dive. Now it was Phoebe's turn. Oh. Come on, Phoebe, go for it. Oh, do you mind? <laughs> Phoebe wasn't very good at diving. In fact, she decided not to take part in any more silly competitions. But then Joey had an idea. Why don't we have a race to the top of that gum tree? Now, Phoebe was pretty certain she was the best at climbing trees. The winner is the first one to touch the top of the tree. Ready? Steady? Go! The winner is Joey! Second place to Jimmy. What happened? We beat you! <laughs> but how? You must have cheated! You're just a bad loser! <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe wished she could have been the best at something. She didn't really mind what it was, just so long as she was the best at it. Oh. Uh, I need another painting twig, a small one for doing details. Will you guard the picture while I go and look? Okay. Fantastic, Phoebe! Yeah! Why didn't you tell us you were such a brilliant artist? Uh, oh. You are the best at something! Oh, Phoebe, I wish I could paint like that! Well, <laughs> it's not so hard once you know how. Phoebe knew it was wrong to pretend the painting was hers, but somehow she couldn't bring herself to own up. The hard part is uh, choosing the colours and uh, finding a good subject. Do another painting, Phoebe! Uh, okay. While we watch. Yeah, a portrait of me and Jimmy. You could paint us bouncing. Like this. Of course I'll paint your pictures, but I'll uh, have to think about it first. What colours to use and... Um... Fine. Just let us know when you're ready. Poor Phoebe 
had got herself into a right pickle. <laughs> Want me to teach you how to paint? You couldn't. I'm useless at everything. I am a good teacher. Could you teach me to paint like you? No, not like me. Everyone has their own style. It's just a question of finding it. I could give it a try, I suppose. Oh! Never mind, Phoebe. Try something else. It's not very good, is it? Oh, don't worry, Phoebe. These things take time. Everyone knows I'm the worst at everything. No good at diving, no good at racing to the top of the gum tree, and now no good at painting. Hey, that's amazing! You didn't tell us you were starting another picture. Huh? Phoebe has her own style. She calls it dot painting. Do I? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't finished yet. She's good, isn't she? The best. I always said she had talent. Hey, want to help? Who? Us? We don't know how to paint. Just step into the mud and get hopping. I'll show you how it's done. Nice one, Phoebe. Hi, everyone. Oh, good evening, Mom, and welcome. How can we help you? I've come for my bedtime story. Excellent. Please sit down and make yourself comfortable. Can we tempt you to a shiny green apple? Oh, thanks. Or a yellow banana? I don't understand. You don't understand what, milady? I don't understand why we're all having to be so polite. We're practicing our good manners. Ready for tonight's story. My lords, ladies, animals, birds and insects, please be seated for the story of Doris, princess of the Zambam River, told by Molly the Hippopotamus. Ahem. <coughs> Doris the duck, Toby the tortoise, and Kevin the crocodile were best friends. They did everything together. Each morning, they would meet on the banks of the Zambam River and splash in the mud pool. <laughs> that was fun. What shall we do now? Let's play. Than that. Your turn, Toby. <laughs> Doris, Toby, and Kevin enjoyed playing games together. <laughs> that was fun. What should we do now? Let's pretend to be someone else. I'll be a pirate looking for treasure. Where's Kevin? I'm a top secret spy. Who are you going to be, Doris? Doris? I'm a pirate. 
princess. <laughs> Doris, a princess. I am Doris, princess of the Bam Bam River. Kevin, you can collect some pretty lotus flowers for me. <laughs> what? I'm a princess, and you got to do everything I say. But yes. <laughs> yes, your royal duckness. And you, Toby, you can fetch me some nice things to eat. Some grapes and a great big pile of yum yum fruit. Certainly, your royal duckness. I've had enough. Me too. Let's play hide and seek. I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Yes, Doris. Then please address me as your royal duckness from now on. Can we stop playing this game now? Your royal duckness? Game? What game? I am a duck princess. I am, I am. But? but... No buts. Go and get me some more. Pretty things. Toby and Kevin hadn't gone far when they saw Audrey the ostrich. Hello, boys. My, my, you are looking tired. We've been playing Let's Pretend, and Doris has decided she's a princess. She's treating us like servants, and we don't know how to stop the game. Hmm. Now, let me see. A princess, eh? Now, listen carefully. I think... Toby and Kevin got to work. Good afternoon, your duckness. Before you say anything more, I'm still a princess. We and... know. You do? Yes, your royal duckness. And to prove it, we've made a crown for your royal head. And a throne for your royal bottom. You have? Oh, where are they? Let's go and see them. Let's go now. You're a princess. You can't walk there. Please allow me to give you a ride on my back. Oh, thank you, Toby, my loyal servant. Wow! For the rest of the day, Doris was treated like a true princess. Morning, Your Majesty. I brought you a ladder so that you can climb onto your throne. A morning, your ducksomeness. I bring you warthog treasure. Oh, thank you, my loyal Herbert. I'll eat it later. Your, your Majesty, Majesty, we bring you palm leaf fans to keep you cool. But after a while, being a princess got boring. Toby taught us. Yes, your duckness. Bring me a double twig burger with tomato relish and a triple helping of mogo chips. Sorry, your royal duckness, but you can't have any. What? A Zambam princess must only eat the finest of food. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, the yum yum fruit. Then Kevin and Toby decided to play a game of silly faces. Here's a good one. Look. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? <laughs> Here, guys. <laughs> Oh, sorry, your duckness. You are not allowed to join in. Being a princess is a serious matter. Oh, yes. 
Of course. Does your Majesty require anything else? Hmm, no, thank you. In that case, Toby and I will go for a wallow in the mud pool. Can I come? Oh, sorry, Your Royal Duckness. Wallowing in the mud is not something princesses do. Doris could stand it no longer. She loved splashing in the mud pool. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just plain old Doris the Duck who wants to play with her friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that. So, what are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Hello? Anyone at home? It's Lucy! I've arrived! Oh, 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 that tickles! Well, it serves you right. Anyone would think you didn't recognize me. Well, you do look, um. Yes? Different? Actually, Lucy, you look very grown up. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. I want to look grown up. Grown ups stay up late and boss people around. Oh, yes, I know about that. <laughs> Don't blush, Lucy. Sometimes we all wish we were someone different. Sometimes I wish I was Tickles because he knows all the best jokes. And sometimes I wish I was as big and strong as Nelson. <laughs> and once I wished I could fly like a bird. <laughs> now you're making fun of me. No, we're not. It's true, it's true. Nelson did want to be a bird. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but, but yes, I was a bird for a day. In fact, I still hold the long-distance flying record for elephants. Really? Go on, Molly. You tell the story. All right, then. Nelson was always busy doing elephanty things. He was big and strong and helped the other animals. Oh, no! Nelson was so good at doing elephanty things that he got a bit bored. Oh, this is all too easy. I need a new challenge. And that's when Nelson spotted a weaver bird. <laughs> oh, thanks! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making a nest. All birds have nests. They're nice and comfy to sleep in. Could I build one? I suppose so. It would have to be big. That's OK. I've got all day. So Nelson started to build a nest. Uh... Nelson liked his nest very much. I want to be a bird. Hmm. His friend, the weaver bird, agreed to give Nelson a few lessons. First, the weaver bird showed Nelson how to flap his wings. Nelson didn't have wings to flap, so he flapped his ears instead. Uh... But that didn't work. Then the weaver bird told Nelson about feathers. Feathers? They help birds to fly. You need lots and lots of feathers. Here's one to get you started. So Nelson borrowed a feather from each of his bird friends. Oh. Ouch! At last, I'm a bird. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a bird! I'm a... Nelson thought he would never be able to fly. Here! Nelson! Come and look at this! Uh... It's a tree. I've seen one before. This isn't just any old tree. This is a helicopter tree. A helicopter tree? Here! Watch this! The seed of the helicopter tree gave Nelson a brilliant idea. What are you making, Nelson? You'll see. What do you think of my helicopter blades? But they're made out of banana leaves. Give it a spin and then stand well back. Be careful, Nelson. Oh, I'm flying! Well done, Nelson. This is great! You get such a good view from up here. Hello, Audrey! Oh! oh. Hello, Nelson. Hello, Weaverbird! Yee! But soon, Nelson began to take being a bird a bit too seriously. He tried to hatch some watermelons. <laughs> then he wanted to catch worms, just like the weaver bird. Only worms were a bit small for him, but snakes were just the right size for an elephant oh. bird. Things got really bad when Nelson decided to try and beat the world long-distance flying record. Are you sure this is a good idea? I'm not an elephant anymore. I'm a bird now. I've practised very hard. You'll see. But it's very windy. Ha! <laughs> we birds don't mind a little breeze. The wind caught Nelson <sighs> and he flew high up into the air. <laughs> Then the wind began to blow even stronger. Whoa, look out! Whoa! <coughs> Dangerous flying, ignoring a traffic signal, failing to report an accident with a flamingo, and landing in a manner such as to endanger other animals. Nelson realised that he wasn't really a very good bird. The animals felt sorry for Nelson and they thought of a plan to make him feel better again. Oh my, oh my, oh my! Oh dear! Oh my, oh my, oh my! Oh dear. What's happening? What's going on down there? A big boulder rolled right in front of King Snake's burrow. It's heavy and no one can lift it. I'm on my way for help. I could move it. No, you're a bird. Birds can't shift boulders. No, I'm not. I'm an elephant. Oh, I feel better already. Oh, oh, oh! Thank you, Nelson. Nelson was helping the others by doing things only an elephant can do. And he was happy again. It's with great pleasure that I accept this award for long distance flying. Yay! <laughs> but I have decided that the sky is for the birds. From now on, I will be an elephant again. <laughs> All the animals were pleased to have back the old Nelson that they knew and loved. Hello, Georgina. Hi, Lucy. Would you like a special slide down tonight? Oh, yes, please. Here we go. Great! 
You're so clever, Georgina. I wish my neck was bendy like yours. Mm, ouch! Ow! Careful, Lucy. You'll hurt yourself. <sighs> I suppose you have to be a giraffe to do these tricks. Even giraffes have to be careful. Remember when Georgina... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was really silly. <laughs> what was? <laughs> More than just silly. That was seriously stupid. What are they talking about, Georgina? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Enough secret whispers. I think Georgina should tell her story out loud so everyone can hear it. Oh, all right then. When I lived in Africa, I learned to do all sorts of tricks with my long neck. animals were very impressed with my many talents. I was a real star. Come to the Georgina Giraffe Show today at noon near the Blue Mountain. Let's tell everyone! Yeah! Uh, <laughs> a giraffe show? Today at noon? Near the Blue Mountain. Really? I must tell everyone. Oh. There's a giraffe show. Today at noon, near the Blue Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for coming to my show, starring me, Georgina Giraffe. I am tall, very tall. I'm much taller than you all. I can stretch to the treetops. I can nibble all the leaves off. I can reach very high oh. to the clouds in the sky. It's a thrill, it's such fun when I'm playing with the sun. Ouch! <laughs> it's hot! Ouch! I'm a star, I'm unique. Just look at my physique. I'm a first class acrobat, but I guess you all know that. <laughs> Can't you see? I am pretty, I am witty, and Georgina, ballerina, prima donna, concertina. I'm so clever, I'm the best. I'm much better than the rest. La 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 we just laugh and laugh and laugh, cos you are a daft giraffe. <laughs> Serves you right for being such a show-off. <laughs> Stop it, everyone. Can't you see Georgina's hurt herself? Are you all right? I, I didn't mean what I said about being better than the rest. I'm sorry. Don't worry. I'll fix it. Oh! Ouch! Not like that, silly. You're making it worse. Let me try. Oh. Oh. Maybe some tickles will loosen the knot. <laughs> oh, no. oh. 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 Has anyone got any good ideas? Let's think. Hmm. Hmm. I know. 
we could take Georgina to our Uncle Gordon. Your Uncle Gordon? Uncle Gordon is a doctor. And he knows all about knots. So, Giggles and Tickles took me to their Uncle Gordon, who lived far away on the other side of the Blue Mountain. Lots of animals were waiting to see Dr Gordon. What's happened to you? Uh, I was trying to catch a fly. <laughs> me too! <laughs> oh, anyway, we both tried to catch the same fly and we got our trunks into a bit of a knot. <laughs> and the fly got away! <laughs> The knot's gone. We can go home now. Bye! We had to wait for a long, long ah. time. Until finally... Uh, next, please. Hi, Uncle Gordon. Giggles. Tickles, what a surprise. We brought our friend Georgina. She's not very well. She's got a knot. A knot? Ah, you've come to the right place. Now, uh, let's see what the knot book says. Uh, is it a twist knot? Knot. Or, or perhaps a, a flip-flop slip knot. <laughs> or could it be... A nutty, nutty, not, nutty, not, not, not. Not. Hmm. Can you remember what you were doing when you got this knot? I was singing la 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 la. And showing off. Ah, aha. I see. It's a big show off knot. Uh, don't worry. All you have to do is sing the song again, but this time, backwards. But what? La, 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 backwards. Um, here it says, la, 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 backwards is al, al, al. Uh, so that's what you have to sing. Oh, well, I'll try. Uh, <clears throat> ow, 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 ow. This way, Georgina. Dr. Gordon. You're, You're the best! Later that day, we returned to the savannah. Animals were so kind. They put a show on to cheer me up. Hi, Lucy. Hi, everyone. And how's our little Lucy today? School wasn't so good. Why? What's the matter? Well, to start with, I'm on reading book number three, and my best friend's on book five. Oh, that's not so bad. Then I came third in the spelling test. That's not so bad either. And I'm the worst at skipping in the whole class. <gasps> oh, oh, no! Dreadful! Oh, oh, no! I know. No bother, mate. Who said that? I did. I'm Ribbit... The Frog. Hello! Now, what's all this I hear about you not being able to skip? I just can't seem to get the hang of it. We'll soon fix that. My friend Joey had exactly the same problem. Let me tell you about it. Ribbit. Ribbit. Joey was a little kangaroo who lived in Australia. 
When he was born, he was so small, he couldn't do anything by himself. His mum had to carry him in her pouch wherever she went. Good day, Janet. Good day, Julie. How's little Joey today? He's fine. My Jimmy's just started teething. Show us your teeth, Jimmy. Oh, they crop up so fast, don't they? Tell me about it. Seems like only yesterday I had my first. Ouch! Stop it, you two. Behave! Oh, look, there's Janice with the triplets. Yeah! 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 yeah. Good day, Janice. <sighs> Hi, girls. Gosh, I can't wait for these three to start jumping by themselves. It won't be long before all our joeys start to jump now. Yeah. <sighs> then came spring. Spring is a very important time for little kangaroos. That's when they leave their mum's pouches and start to jump. Hey, Joe, what are you doing? We're practising for the junior jump at Tucker Tucker Billabong. How about you? Nah, he's too young. I'm not too young. Look. Oh, Joey's got flat feet. Joey can jump. Joey can jump. Oh, Joey, there you are. I was looking for you. It's time for your first jumping lesson. Just watch your dad. Joey's dad was a champion bouncer. No kangaroo could jump higher than him. <laughs> That's how you do it. Now it's your turn, son. But I can't jump. What do you mean you can't jump? Of course you can jump. Just try, Joey. My son can't jump. I don't believe it. Now, Ray, don't be too hard on the boy. He'll learn when he's ready. Don't you worry, Joey. Son, I'm Ribbit. Ribbit the Frog. Hey there, little Roo. Don't cry. Here, watch this. Ribbit. Ribbit. <laughs> Sorted. No use crying, mate. I'll solve your problems. But I have a great big problem that no one can solve. Oh, really? Tell Ribbit all about it. I can't jump. Can't jump? A kangaroo that can't jump? Impossible. Wait here. These are my jumping boots. They helped me jump when I was little. You can borrow them if you like. It won't work. I'll never be able to jump. Go on, give it a try. And now jump! Jump! You can do it, Joey. Just try. Oh! I did it! I jumped! Yeah! Higher! And higher! And higher! Joey practised all night, and in the morning, he bounced right back to his mum and dad. Mum, Dad, look! I can jump! Oh, Joey! Now we can enter you for the junior jump! Kangaroos came to the Tucker Tucker Billabong from miles around. All the young roos were there with their mums and dads, grannies, granddads, aunties and uncles. It was the event of the year. My Joey, he's only this big, but boy can he bounce. Look, there he is. Joey! What are you doing here? You can't jump. Joey can jump. Joey can jump. Those big boots will slow you down. Good day, everyone. Quietly. 
That's better. Good night, everyone. Let's give a big welcome to all those little roos who are here for the Junior Jam. Uh, okay, let's get started. Who's first? Jumping boots are not allowed. Oh. Don't worry, Joey. You can jump without the boots. But how? They're only beginner's boots. You don't need them now. Attention, everyone. I, I want to jump without my boots. Can I? Please, please, Mr Platypus. Give him a chance. Give well, him a chance. All right, then. Oh, thanks, Mr. Platypus. <laughs> and the winner of the junior jump is Joey. I knew you could do it, son. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit. 